We saw some really, really interesting new updates with Midjourney v5.2 this month, and they added features that will really blow your mind. And many users have been comparing this to the Adobe Firefly, which was launched earlier this year. However, in this video, we will compare these two features and let you be the judge. Personally, I will think any form of comparison unfair to Adobe at this point considering that Midjourney has been running since 2022, and recent happenings have shown that AI progresses really, really fast. Let's just look into the features and we'll see a few examples later in the video. I've always known that the most interesting thing about AI will be the tools that they will be infused in. And they will make working with these tools a lot easier and more interesting, and that's exactly what we're seeing with Adobe Photoshop. You don't really need technical knowledge of the tools and can basically generate effects via prompts. And this is a really good application of AI-powered text-to-image programs like Dolly. Midjourney 5.2 came with some insane new updates that enhanced the whole experience of the program. They added this interesting new zoom out feature. And for a better understanding, you must have seen one of those videos that continue to zoom out indefinitely now. And that's what Midjourney is offering here. You can basically decide to use the normal zoom out, but you can continue the zoom out while entering new prompts that you want to see in the generated image. And it will just continue that way, just like we have in this video. And we have another classic example posted by this Twitter user. Pretty impressive stuff if you ask me. And in order to create that infinite zoom out feature, the custom zoom button comes in really handy. And this enables you to describe what you want the image to zoom out to as we have it here on the Midjourney website. And you can pile up and edit these images to show as in the video I just showed you. And there's this inclusion of a variation or remix mode in the generated images. And there's high variation and low variations. The low variation makes little changes to the image, while the high variation will bring about major changes to the appearance while maintaining the original idea to a level. This is quite interesting. As you can see in these images here, the low variation mode just makes little changes to the facial expression of the subject, while in the high variation mode, the entire outfit is changed according to what the user desires. This is really impressive and will come in really handy for creators looking for a room to carry out experiments without spending so much time on that because these prompts are generated within seconds. And this feature can move the subject to totally different backgrounds. In version 5.2, Midjourney also introduced the shortened prompt feature in order to better execute the prompts. And I personally think this will make the results pretty much better since the AI basically comes up with them. And you can see a good example here. With long descriptions, you can't really be sure what the AI understands and what it doesn't, and I feel this feature enables you to see what the system thinks of your prompt before you execute them. Help see what the end result will be like. And overall, Midjourney updated the general output quality of the AI. And as you can see here in the comparison of version 5.2 with the older versions, it's evident that the images from 5.2 are more appealing with more vibrance and all. It says right here on the website, This model produces more detailed, sharper results with better colors, contrast, and compositions. It also has a slightly better understanding of prompts than earlier models and is more responsive to the full range of the stylized parameter. These are some of the key new features of the new Midjourney version, and I must say that they're very, very impressive. Also, Adobe has done something really impressive with the just-announced Firefly. And I've been seeing a lot of comparisons lately of both Midjourney and Firefly, but I don't really think this is the first time for that, as Adobe is just making its entry. But despite that, the quality of images between the two are really close, and Firefly will certainly do better with time. Despite the performance, Adobe really included some impressive features in this release, and in case you'll like to try this out for yourself, it's still in beta, so you'll have to download the beta version to access it. Adobe has an amazing text-to-image feature, and the images generated are quite impressive. But comparing the images to what you would get from Midjourney shows some room for improvements from Adobe. As you can see here, the quality of images seems more realistic with Midjourney than with Firefly. And the model-like images we find in Firefly are attributed to the use of stock images in the training of this model. You can see right here that anyone will easily accept the first image from Midjourney as fitting more into the context than Firefly. 
and the use of stock images in the training of Firefly has started to generate some kind of controversies for Adobe, and this is the result of an alleged failure to compensate the sources as you can see right here in this news article. Hopefully Adobe will improve on this with subsequent updates and we look forward to seeing that. Also, Adobe Firefly allows for in-painting, and this is a feature that basically allows the user to alter certain characteristics in the subject. As you can see from the demo, the user is able to change the total outfit on the subject simply by marking the target parts and typing a prompt of the desired outfit, and this can be done several times to meet the taste of the user. And I think the most impressive thing about this is the sheer ease with which this is carried out. With regular Photoshop tools, making some of these changes would take an experienced person long minutes or even hours to implement them. But with the adoption of this text-to-image AI, even people with very little knowledge of the technicalities of Photoshop can easily navigate the process. Another insane feature here is the 3D-to-image feature. You can clearly see that we have a plain 3D structure of something that looks like a castle with no details whatsoever. But the AI was able to construct a whole new image around this stuff. This is just insane and will be a very good way for architects to draw inspiration. And the use of these tools is not limited to any group or profession. They're really available for anyone to try out, and we will see what the criteria for access will be when this finally starts to run fully out of the beta version. You can also generate a whole template for maybe cards and other stuff you might need. And this is a niche presently occupied by graphic designers. I'm still really waiting to see the impact AI will have on the way we work now because it's really going to be a major adjustment. With this text-to-template feature, anyone could easily have any graphic creation job sorted out without much rigor. And no doubt that for bigger projects, this tool will really help professional designers to have better and easier application of certain features. Another thing I find really impressive about Firefly is the photo combination feature. The seamless way this AI is able to integrate different elements and blend them with each other is just mind-blowing. As you can see in these images, Adobe Firefly does a good job integrating new subjects into totally different backgrounds and with the edges looking really sharp. Getting the edges to blend properly is usually where the job gets really difficult, especially when you have to deal with tight spaces, but Firefly is doing a really good job here. We also really need to give Firefly the medal on the aspect of image extension. In this demonstration with the image of the house and the scenery, the AI is able to seamlessly generate a background that gives a very realistic blend with the original image. When you see these things happen, you get to really learn how far we have gone with generative AI in a very short period. As you can see here, using the regular extension tool on Photoshop generates something that isn't so great and won't meet the taste of present day photography. But when you use the generative tool, the AI is able to analyze this image and can imagine what should come after what in the image. And the fact that this is still an entry level quality is still amazing. Though some might argue that Adobe has been in the photo editing business for a while, so these advancements might not be so surprising after all. Although Midjourney seems to have the upper hand in most aspects now, I really think the UI for Firefly is more comfortable to work with than what you will see in Midjourney, which is just in a chat format and can be really chaotic when you're not on the paid version. And unlike Midjourney, you actually own your creation. There are certain regulations on your rights to what you can create on Midjourney, which I don't really think is much of a problem for now. However, generative AI is definitely going to change the way we go about a lot of stuff, and I'm really eager to see these things play out. And I'm guessing the greatest beneficiaries in this will be creatives, as most of the tools are tailored towards making the image, audio, text, and sound generation a lot easier. We would really like to hear your opinions on what we just talked about. Do you think Adobe will be able to beat Midjourney anytime soon?